the whole pronoun thing today is just um this is this is definitely a new thing this whole gender ideology that someone could be um born in a body that's different than their gender than their you know who they are kind of thing and so now they're trying to say well even god is um you know you know his his pronouns are not he him but rather they should be they them you know and so my general response is this and by the way i have a whole article on this if somebody wanted to go to our website str.org i have a, a um, article called, i think it's called god's preferred pronouns um and i kind of unpack a whole bunch of thoughts about this but basically my first response would be this the whole idea to claim that god has they them preferred pronouns is anachronistic and by that i mean it's um it's something that doesn't fit the time period in which um the bible was written okay so uh this whole idea of gender ideology and preferred pronouns is a modern 21st century invention and for for someone to take that ideology and impose it on a 2000 year old or 2000 year plus old text is to impose an ideology on something that it doesn't belong there right so in one sense i would just say the whole enterprise is just is is mistaken from the get go because it's anachronistic you're you know talking about something that you know you're, you're trying to impose your ideology on something that doesn't uh accept that ideology but then second of all um god seems to reveal his pronouns you know very clearly in his own word so the bible is the word of god and god in that re constantly refers to himself in the singular masculine you know he him uh, we see this all throughout scripture. And then I would add when God becomes incarnate, when he, uh, when the second person of the Trinity uh, becomes becomes man, takes on the nature of humanity in the person of Jesus, Jesus himself, who is fully God, fully man, is also singular masculine in his gender, if you want to use that term, right? So he's he's a male. He's he, him. And then even when Jesus refers to the father, he refers to him as our father, singular, masculine, right? So all the data in scripture we see is that God is he, him. There's no they, them. You know, people are like, well, God is not, you know, God is not sexed, you know, which is true. God, the father is clearly not male or female. I get that. But he chose to self-disclose himself as, as he, him. Right. So if you really want to go down this whole road of gender ideology, which, again, I think it's anachronistic, so not legitimate in the first place. But if you really wanted to go down that road, well, God's already made himself clear on that. Sometimes people will point to um, some of the more feminine characteristics. I think there's a passage in the Old Testament where God says, I'm like a, a hen who's, you know, protects my 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 uh, the chicks or whatever, something like that. I can't remember what it is, but. Well, I remember when I read that passage, it says he's like a hen. He's not, it, so it's a simile, you know, it's not a, um, it's not like he is a hen, right? It's, so it's just saying he's, he's like a hen in, in that he's protective in that sense. So even in those cases where some of the feminine characteristics are associated with God, it's used as a, oh, it's, he's like this, or he's like that, not that he is that, or is, is something else. So anyways, all that being said, um, I think again, gender ideology applied to the old, to the Bible is anachronistic, but despite that, God has revealed his pronouns as he, as he him very clearly, and so is Jesus. So all the data points in that direction.